Welcome back, YouTubers. So I want to talk about my Canik TP9 Elite SC. I've showed in previous videos of the comparison to the uh, Taurus G3 and G3C. I also compared it to the Glock 44. And, um, but we're going to just talk about the Canik today. As you can see, it's clear. Clear as it can be. There's no rounds in the chamber. All right, so. Overall, this gun is by far one of the best on the markets right now. I can't even lie. Especially if you're just looking for everyday carry. Something very small. Not too small but not too big um something that's around very affordable range not too high and expensive you know especially nowadays where a lot of people don't have jobs and things like that but we want to protect ourselves so i'm gonna speak about the canic or the janic or what they usually may call it but overall it's a great gun so let's start with the gun overall. As you can see, the colors to these guns are immaculate. I mean, I've seen, I want to say probably about six or seven different color forms of this. This one was just so happened to be my favorite. I went into the store. Actually, I was in the store probably about two or three weeks prior to that, and they didn't have this. I asked them, they said, no, we didn't have it in stock, but we should be having some coming soon. I just so happened to go in one day, let me stop by and check and see what they got, and they had it, and the color caught my eye. I love this, like, goldish, bronze type finish. Of course, the black at the bottom, and the little red, I love that, that just, to me, it's a good, it, it, it tracks the eye. That's what I like about it. Of course, that's not what's going to tell if it's shoot good or not. But to me, that's part of why I buy guns mostly. Things that kind of attracts my eye. Um, but overall, yes, good gun. Now, let's talk about the slide. As you see, it's already cocked back. I love the slide. Kind of heavy. It gives you that real you know snap gives a good snap well a big snap but i like that um the slide is not bad again it's a good slide also learned that if you wanted to change your recoil springs that might help loosen or stiffen it up depending on how you like your gun to be but me overall, I like the stiffness. I like the f I like stiff anything. It makes me feel like everything is tight and firm. There's no looseness. I actually had a loose um, recoil spring in my uh, my Taurus G3, and it was actually throwing me off with my shots a little bit. Didn't realize why. I thought it was just myself. Of course, everybody would automatically go say readjust yourself and go about it a different way, but that. It wasn't the case. It was I was shooting perfectly with my G3C. I was shooting perfectly with this, and but I had problems with the uh, G3. Come to find out, it was my recoil spring. Fixed that, tightened it up. No problems ever since then. But back to the Canik. All right. So we talk about the slide. One thing also about the slide is it's come optic ready. You could take these two screws off here. Depending on the type of op that you buy, you can also buy plates so that it can fit in here to your light. Um, also, a feature that I like about the slide, which is the loaded indicator, which is right here. This little thing tips, sits up. That's how you know that it's loaded. A lot of people actually complained about that, those who I've spoken to. But overall... I actually kind of like it. Um, the slide hold is ambidextrous. 
So you can release it from either way, which is another thing that I like. And then the, uh, the slide release to take it off is also ambidextrous. Pull, push it forward, boom. That's simple. Like, uh, with my Taurus, I have to like make sure I slide it on there just right. With the with this, you just have to make sure you see these little grooves right here. Let me see if I can get that in there for you guys. Here we go. There we go. Little groove right here. All you have to do is just line that up right where this piece is at. Set that right there and slide it back on. Again, recoil springs is great. You want to break your gun down, clean it always, especially after every hundred something rounds. It's always good to just go back in, clean it, lube it up real good, and go back together. Slide it back on just like this. See how it just sits. Pull it back. So you're good to go. Um, another thing that I love about this gun is the indicator back here. That lets you know it's also ready to go. Not just saying here, or we got one in the head, but we also got one here saying, listen, this is ready to fire. So that's one thing that I love about it. Um, I also love the texture. Now, don't get me wrong. I talk about my G3C. The texture on that is phenomenal to me. I love rough texture. To me, I feel like I get a better grip the rougher the texture is. A lot of people don't like rough texture due to the fact that when you carry in, sometimes that rough texture can scratch you up a little bit, things like that. I mean, I typically wear T-shirts up under my shirt or whatever shirt that I'm wearing, so that don't bother me. But to each his own. I also like the slide release. I mean, a mag release. It's nice and big. It fits my finger. Um... And I believe that you can swap it from side to side, if I'm not mistaken. Look more into that. Also come with this. So you can add a flashlight, laser, whatever you like to your gun. Um, other than that, oh, the back piece. Comes with two back pieces. One regular standard and one for bigger hands. Now, you can look at my hands. I don't have the biggest hands. Five, seven. 150 some pounds. I don't have the biggest hands. This is why I carry guns too. For people who think that just because I'm 5'7 and 150 something pounds, that I'm something to play with. All right. Well, you play with this. <laughs> but other, other than that, no. Um, yeah, so I, I, I had to change the back piece, which I love. Not a lot of guns come with it. Um, change it out and fits my hand perfectly. Like I said, I don't have the smallest, but I don't have the biggest either. Um, which is great for me. Comes with a 12 round mag and a 15 round mag, plus you, of course, you know, one in the chamber. So that's 13 plus 16. Also comes with a lot of other things, but the clip, the holster, meh, it's all right. Um, I've watched a couple of videos and I got some tips on how you can actually like form it to you, which is a uh, boil just a little bit and kind of reform it to me is i want to reform it to where it actually hugs the back of my body right now it kind of gives me like a little bulkage so I, I really didn't too much care for it the clips of course are not the greatest they're plastic i will prefer you know aluminum or metal should i say something that's a little bit more sturdy but i mean you can't complain when you get this with the gun Again, a lot of guns, companies do not send you a holster with your gun. So this is a plus right here. Plus, like I said, it comes with the two 15 round, it comes with two mags, 115, 112. So let's get to the part of the most important, the infamous part of this gun, which is the trigger. The trigger is by far one of the best straight out of the box triggers that you can get. I'm in a group on Facebook 
and I've seen a lot of people update the trigger. And I asked him, I'm like, why? If, if it's already immaculate when it comes straight out of the box, what do you need to upgrade it for? Well, he explained to me, you know, his reasons for it. And I actually liked the upgrade. The upgrade was cool. It was pretty cool. I liked the trigger. But I feel like if, if it's not broken, don't fix it. It works well with you. Keep it. But to each his own. But the trigger is amazing. When I say it's amazing, it's amazing. So I'm already, already ready to go. I could just give you a quick. Now let's check the reset. Again, we're going to do it again. Reset. That is by far top of the line to me. I mean... It, when I first started shooting, it took me a little to get it, but yeah, it actually made my shots a lot better because I had I didn't have to release all the way. I just go right at it and just, and it makes you concentrate more, me personally, it makes me concentrate more on releasing my trigger and things of that nature. Um, I did post a video before, you can find it if you can't, um, I didn't say much about it. I just went to the range. I think I shot the Canic and I shot uh, my Taurus. But I didn't explain what type of rounds that I shoot and things like that. I, I didn't go that far. But I'm going to explain to the rounds that I did put through it. And I didn't... I can't. Of course, at this time, you're not going to get the greatest rounds. I'm not about to pay $75 for a box of hollow point rounds and that was by far one of the cheapest and I'm talking about a, a 50 box 20 boxes is probably going for about go 40 or 50 which is still high I can't wait till these prices drop back down because trying to find 9 millimeter pistol I mean rounds ammo it's very hard so when I did run across any type of hollow points I pretty much kept those I won't shoot those out the range. I mean, they're for self-defense, so I'm not going to play around with them. But I did have to try it out because you want to see the difference in how your gun can react to different types of ammo. So I'm going to go grab some of the ammo that I did run through this right quick. Just give me a second. So I got some Telemo, and I grabbed some, uh, they got this from a regular store, Ammo Incorporated. It's very cheap. I was getting them at 30 bucks a box. Can't beat that. I mean, if you're just going to go throw rounds down the range real quick and test it out, good. I did learn that depending on the grain, your recoil can be slightly different. I actually had better shooting with my 115s, if I'm not mistaken, instead of my 124s, or my 124s. Or it could be vice versa. I know I was at the range and I filled up my ammo carry thing, a bunch of ammo. I, when I bought it, it came with some type of ammo. I don't know what kind of ammo it was. But I had 250 rounds in it. Um, and then I just took a lot of leftover ammo that I had and just dumped it in it that wasn't in boxes like these. Or if they was halfway filled or whatever the case may be. I just dumped it in it. So I was running through different types of ammo. And that's, I actually did that just to try to see any type of jamming. If, if it just doesn't like certain type of ammo. If it's certain grains, that's just better. I haven't tried the 145s. I only be anywhere between 115s and 125, 124. Um, I can honestly say it eats through everything. Only problem that I did have is sometimes, like depending on the ammo, it wouldn't cock back on the last round. That kind of threw me off. And I was wondering, I thought it was because I was using a reset and not releasing all the way. But come to find out, 
I wasn't the only person that had the problem and it actually was just the grain of the ammo, depending on the grain of the ammo. Um, other than that, she's a beauty. I did have to adjust my sighting. I if you watch a couple of videos that shoot uh because this sits a little high back here. So I was I like to shoot right on. Uh that's just me. I just like to shoot right on. Um and I was noticing my shots was higher than what I expected. So I had to drop down just a tad bit, not really do a six o'clock, but like right in between. And then I was able to hit exactly where I want. My groupings became better, things of that nature. This front sight is, um, I forget the word, but basically all you could do is you put a light on it for about a good minute or whatever. And it should keep a light, like a, like a greenish light, for about a good 15, 20 minutes for dark. Other than that, overall, this gun is by far one of the best guns that I purchased. I've only paid, I think, it came up to about $350, $400, I'm not mistaken. But yes, it's a beautiful gun. I love it. It's by far one of the best guns. I would recommend anybody to, especially if you're a Glock fan, because it kind of got that bulkiness of a Glock to Glock. I believe the Glock 19 fourth generation is a little bit longer. This is definitely longer than, uh, or bigger than your, your Sig Saucer 365. It's bigger than the... Uh, I think it's the Walter, and no, 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 I'm sorry. The uh, Smith & Wesson MP is bigger than that guy. It's bigger than the Taurus G3. But other than that, three GTC, I'm sorry. But other than that, it's a great overall EDC gun. I love it. Doesn't have any problems with it. I keep it in the holster. And like I said, it's just a, a, a fantastic gun. I know a lot of people don't know about this, so I'm making this video so to put people on to the Canic. Go try the Canic out. Trust me. You will not be upset. And you might end up buying it. But like I said, always try it out. I tell everybody in my videos, always try out as many different guns as possible. Find what works well with you. If you find what works well with you, you will have no problems becoming a better shooter. And then, of course, practice makes perfect. Um, other than that, Janik, Canik, is by far it. I appreciate y'all stopping through, checking out my video. I'm going to make some more down the line. I actually might go to the range and I'll do another video for the range so I can let you know what ammo that I'm actually using and things like that. Give you a better outlook on my overall outcome of practicing and shooting. But other than that, you have a good one. I thank you.